Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangus, and I welcome you guys to yet another Fire Emblem character spotlights. Today, we're taking a look at the first female sword fighter to appear in the Fire Emblem series, the deadly and beautiful Ira. Ira is the bastard princess of Isaac, born the daughter of King Mananan and the half sister of Prince Marico, an aunt to Prince Shannon. She is also a descendant of the Crusader Odo, and have minor holy blood coursing through her veins. Ira was born and raised in Isaac, and lived at the royal castle with the rest of her family. When war in Isaac broke out after the Grand Bell Empire attacked, Prince Marikul foresaw that they would not be able to win, and therefore sent Ira, alongside Prince Shannon, who was just a boy at the time, to escape to the barbarian kingdom of Verdain. Verdain was the only kingdom not under Grand Bellion rule at the time, so it seemed the ideal hiding place for Prince Shannon. Ira would act as his guardian, teaching him the art of swordplay and protecting him from harm until he could grow old enough to fight for himself. In order to survive in Verdain, and to provide food for herself and Shannon, Ira was forced to take up work as a mercenary, and her skills eventually landed her into the service of Kinboys, the eldest prince of Verdain. Kinboys was known for his cruelty, and did not treat her or Shannon particularly well. When Sigurd's army crossed the Verdain border in search of Aiden, who had been kidnapped, Kinboys mobilized an army to stop him, and ordered Arya to fight alongside them. Kinboys was a suspicious individual, however, and suspected Ira would betray him and desert to Sigurd's army, so he kept Shannon captive in Genoa Castle, and threatened to have him killed if she ever turned his blade on him. Sigurd eventually defeated Kimboys on the battlefield, and was able to rescue Shannon from Genoa Castle. Upon hearing this news, Ira stopped fighting immediately, and joined Sigurd's liberation army. Ira would follow Sigurd's army all the way to the Battle of Barhara, and would ultimately perish at the hands of Alvis's betrayal. However, she did give birth to two children before passing away, Laksha and Skashaha. Ira has the true look of a woman from Isaac, with long, wild black hair and brown eyes. She stands around 5 foot 6 tall and has a slim but elegant physique, with particularly long legs. She is considered extremely exotic and beautiful. Ira comes off as a very cold and harsh person to those who don't know her. She can even appear intimidating and violent if angered but she does harbor a lot of emotions for those she holds there. She would gladly give her life to protect Prince Shannon from harm, and can be fiercely protective of those she loves. She is prone to fits of anger, and can easily snap at people that annoys her. It takes her a long time to open up her hearts to strangers, but when she does, she is extremely loyal to them. Ira joins you pretty early on in Chapter 1 after the prologue, making her availability pretty good. She can be somewhat tedious to recruit, as you have to keep her alive prior to liberating Genoa Castle, but it's not an impossible task, as you just have to utilize someone with superior movements, such as Sigurd, to bypass her, or simply lure her away from the position within other units. As a unit, Ira is a glass cannon in every sense of the word. With amazing base skill and speed, she can easily kill anyone in single combat thanks to her Pursuit and Astra skills, making her a spectacular boss killer. However, due to her low defense and resistance, leaving her out on the battlefield to take multiple hits on the enemy face can get her killed pretty easily. In particular, lance-wielding cavalry and magic users is not something she should go up against on her own. Ira's growth rates are not that great. Her skill growth is high thanks to her minor Odo blood, and she will most likely cap it very quickly. Her other stats, on the other hand, are not likely to grow as fast, but she does have some pretty insane promotion gains when she promotes into a Swordmaster. However, Ira isn't dangerous because of her stats, but because Astra is on steroids in Fire Emblem 4, and is basically an instant kill for most enemies it procs against. <laughs> you can basically view it as a silencer skill. Her Nihil does not contribute a lot to her survivability. 
Enemies that possess sword skills or even have the ability to land critical hits are extremely rare, particularly in the first generation, so you will rarely ever notice it most of the time. Being locked to swords, it is very important to arm Ira with a large arsenal of different blades. An armor cutter is essential, as the first generation is packed with enemy armor knights, generals and barons. A slim sword is also very handy to have, as you'll also encounter a lot of mounted units. With these swords, Ira can easily take down even the most durable of foes, as the critical damage in Fire Emblem 4 is multiplied before defense, making them devastating against heavily armored enemies. Ira can also make great use of blades if her strength refuses to grow, as her speed is so good she will most likely double most enemies she'll encounter despite being weighed down. She should also carry a magical sword such as the fire sword, so that she is able to retaliate at range during enemy phase. Though with zero base magic and a magic growth of 5% she is unlikely to deal much damage with it, though she can still proc Astra and slay most regular enemies thanks to the sheer amount of attacks. In Chapter 3, Ira can initiate a conversation with either Lex or Holin to gain a Brave Sword. This will without a doubt be her most frequently used weapon from that point on, as the Brave Sword in Fire Emblem 4 is unrivaled stat-wise. It does not only double her regular attacks, but also her Astra hits, which means she will unleash a devastating storm of 10 attacks on her opponents whenever it procs. There's not a single enemy in the first generation that can survive this without a massive amount of luck. Pairing up Ira in the first generation is essential, as she gives birth to two of the most powerful units in the second generation, Laksha and Skashaha, both sword fighters. Getting Ira up to level 30 will provide her children with a small boost to their base stats, which helps out a lot, so make sure you try to clear the arena gauntlet in every chapter. Ira will pass her items down to Laksha, while her lover will pass down his swords and other items to Skashaha, so choosing her to pair her up with is a very important decision. I'm not going to go too crazy on this, as this is a spotlight about Ira, not a pairing guide, but for the sake of amusement I will explain my three most favorite pairings and why I prefer them. The first, but least popular of the three, is Ira and Lex. This pairing provides both children with Paragon and Vantage, which will cause them to level up much faster, as well as attack first on retaliation strikes whenever they're on half health or below, something that can absolutely save their lives. They also become much more tanky thanks to their Nair Holy Blood, which boosts their defense, allowing them to more easily fight on the front lines. The weakness of this pairing is that Lex cannot pass any items down to Skashaha due to being locked to Axis, and believe it or not, both children will actually suffer from very low speed growths, though they will probably still be able to double most enemies in the second generation. My second favorite pairing is Ira and Holin. Like Lex, you can opt to have Holin be the unit Ira speaks to in Chapter 3 to obtain the Brave Sword and increase their love points. This fantastic practice of incest will give both children major Odo blood, which grants them ridiculous growth rates in hit points and skill, sometimes even gaining 2 points on each level up. With this pairing, both children will most likely cap out their hit points, which gives them a lot of durability. Holin also passes down Luna, which sounds nice on paper, but sadly sword skills cannot proc at the same time in Fire Emblem 4, so it kinda just becomes a lackluster Astra. It is nice when it does proc, however, as it is essentially just extra damage, but it's hardly something you can rely on. Being a sword fighter himself, Holin is able to pass down swords to Skashaha, which helps his early game usefulness out a lot. However, this pairing overinflates both children with skill, often making them reach their cap long before hitting max level. Despite both children having major Odo blood, Laksha and Skashaha sadly won't be able to wield the Balmung in the second generation, as it is Shannon's personal weapon. It is possible to use it, however, via a glitch, where you break it, sell it to the pawn shop, and then purchase it with either children, and then repair it, though most people would consider this cheating. However, my favorite pairing is Ira and Dew. Now, while Dew lacks Holy Blood, his solid base growths are so high that it really does not matter. He will provide both children with extremely solid bases and growths in all areas aside from magic. 
If you manage to get Dew up to a Thief Fighter in the first generation, he will also be able to pass A rank swords down to Skashaha. Dew also passes down the skill Bargain, which is not fantastic, but it does save up a lot of money in the long run on repairs, and it allows both children to buy cool things they would normally not have access to, like rings. The real deal, however, is Sol, which activates on skill, something both children will have in spades. While it can't proc together with Astra, Sol allows Lakshay and Skashaha to self-heal, which makes them so much more durable on the front lines, and is also godlike in the arena. For whatever reason, Ira starts out with a large amount of love points with Claude, so be very careful to keep them far apart if she's yet to find her lover, because you absolutely do not want this pairing. It's horrible. At any rate, Ira is a fantastic unit, and will most likely be one of your deadliest killers in the first generation. Well, maybe the second deadliest. Treat her with care, and don't leave her out in the open, and she will horribly murder whoever you throw her at. Have fun! Thank you for watching this Fire Emblem Character Spotlights. Let me know who you want featured in the next episode by telling me in the comments section. If you would be so kind as to give this video a like, that also helps out my channel a ton. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be automatically notified when the next video is released. At any rate, my name's been Manx, and I'll see you guys next time.